let's start you off here in the United States, where in a compelling display that seems plucked from the pages of a science fiction blockbuster, the United States Congress convened a public hearing to address allegations of a government-led conspiracy hiding the truth about UFOs. Our next story shows you how the question of UFOs may go far beyond conspiracy theories or science fiction. It's about government transparency, public safety, and national security. An unending quest. Humanity's search for an intelligent life outside our planet. The vastness of the universe with its billions of galaxies and trillions of stars suggests that the conditions for life may exist elsewhere. We have discovered countless exoplanets and the right conditions where life may flourish. The search for an answer continues expanding our knowledge and challenging our perception of our place in the cosmos. But were we looking at the wrong places? And were aliens already visiting our planet? Well, it is no longer a conspiracy theory. A whistleblower testified before the House Oversight Committee, shedding light on the alleged concealment of truth by the U.S. government regarding UFOs. As we convene here, UAP are in our airspace, but they are grossly underreported. These sightings are not rare or isolated, they are routine. Military aircrew and commercial pilots, trained observers whose lives depend on accurate identification, are frequently witnessing these phenomena. Yes. Three witnesses testified yes. before the Congress yes. Committee. Yes. One of them, a former Air Force intelligence officer, went on to make an explosive claim that the U.S. is concealing a long-standing program that retrieves and reverse engineers unidentified flying objects. I was informed in the course of my official duties of a multi-decade uh, UAP crash retrieval and reverse engineering program. Uh, to which I was denied access to those additional read-ons when I uh, requested it. I made the decision, based on the data I collected, to report this information to my superior, superiors and multiple inspectors general, and in effect becoming a whistleblower. Contrary to the allegations of concealment, the Pentagon has refuted claims of a cover-up. The U.S. military affirms its proactive efforts in investigating a limited number of sightings that lack readily apparent explanations. However, the recent hearing has sparked immense curiosity and captivated audiences. I mean, there's two big questions in this world. What happens when we die and are we alone? And the Pentagon's talking about one of them right now, so it's interesting as hell. The big question is, will the U.S. government embrace transparency and confront this issue head-on? Or will the truth about UFOs remain concealed from the public eye? Bureau Report, we on World is One. For more on this, we are being joined by Glenn Carl from Boston, Massachusetts, in, here in the United States. Carl is a former national intelligence officer from the CIA. Glenn, welcome to our program. Just a little more of your biography before I ask my next question. As Deputy National Intelligence Officer, you led 17 agencies of the intelligence community in preparing the U.S. government's most senior assessments of transnational threats to the nation for the president, members of cabinet, and the nation's most senior military leaders. So with that background, what can you tell us about the national security implications of UFOs? And do they exist? Well, if they exist, they, they never uh, for one millisecond came to the attention or uh, the efforts of any of the 17 agencies uh, that uh, I worked with uh, during my tenure. And what comes to mind to me uh, is less my career and more my ancestors. My ancestors, I'm directly related uh, in some ways, sadly, uh, to uh, the specific individuals who denounced uh, their neighbors as witches in Salem, Massachusetts, uh, almost 350 years ago now. Um, and what they, they said was that there were witches here. And then there was the all of the officials convened and they conducted hearings and they took testimony and they um, 
then crushed or hanged, uh, I think 13 people as witches, based on the hearsay, the allegations, and the testimony collected. And that's what we heard. Now, one of the people testifying, and I don't know any of the three, but one of the three uh, has a history. He said that uh, Benito Mussolini, the Italian dictator of the 1930s and 20s, um, uh, also covered up UFOs. Uh, well, if that were the case, one would have expected over the last 100 years that some evidence of uh, of that, uh, those uh, events or facts would have surfaced. Uh, no. Uh, with the United States, it's not true. Uh, the correspondent said one thing that is erroneous, I'm afraid. Uh, it's not true that there's been a cover-up. The, the United States government, the intelligence community, the Defense Department conducted a a comprehensive analysis of all unidentified flying object reports up until about two, three years ago. And they found that 94% of the reports could be explained by natural phenomena. 6% could not. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there are little green men. That means that we don't have sufficient data to explain. Uh, I also know, and I think this is an important point, how uh, secrecy compartmentation uh, works or fails in the government. And just imagine for a moment that there is a uh, flying saucer hidden someplace uh, by the United States. Well, that means that there are people guarding it. There are facilities holding it. There are uh, budgets paying their salaries. Uh, and it is inconceivable to me that uh, something like this, which would involve hundreds, if not thousands of people, uh, could remain an utter secret forever, except for the say so of these three people. So. Uh, color me skeptical. I'm a skeptic myself, and and considering the fact that there is a lot going on in the news these days regarding the president's son, accusations against uh, President Biden himself, uh, this was a, an, an interesting deviation and a, and a great headline for that day, as some might say. But that being said, John Kirby said that they've set up an organization at the Pentagon to try to analyze and collect information about what these pilots are saying because it's affecting the way they're training and their flights. So what does that mean? Well, I think that there's truth. I mean, in, in when we are misled, most times we're misled based on, on uh, elements of truth. The, the best lie, and I'm not saying these men are intentionally lying, but the best lie uh, this comes to mind because of my past profession, uh, is uh, is founded on truth and, and will use truth to the extent possible. So we know uh, it is true that the Defense Department has uh, for years uh, investigated unidentified flying objects, what are now called, uh, I think, unidentified aerial phenomena. Uh, this was the case. There was a program uh, when I was a boy 50 years ago uh, and in the past decade. Uh, and there are uh, phenomena, uh, UFOs, that uh, we cannot explain. But uh, one shouldn't then infer, because we don't know the answer, there has to be, in this case, an extraterrestrial explanation. Rather, the wise approach, and the one that invariably comes out to be true uh, or accurate, is that we lack sufficient data to explain it. And when we have data, we can explain it. Now, I will add that I firmly um, believe, I don't think there's any doubt, that there is uh, intelligence life elsewhere in the universe. But think for a moment how far away that is. Uh, the nearest star it takes light 4.3 years to uh, to travel between Earth and, and the star. Uh, and the laws of physics make interstellar travel very, very difficult. So the odds are low that we would have been visited, while the odds are high that there is life elsewhere. Glenn Carr, thank you so much for joining us on We On, and please do come back and speak to us. Thank you. Anytime.